God is in the details. The Sinai Peninsula in the Middle East during Moses' time is our destination. Tents are all over the place. Over a million Israelis who were recently liberated from Egypt are housed in those tents. God had performed amazing miracles to get them this far. He had visited Egypt with plagues. He had split the Red Sea, allowing them to cross on dry land. They were en route to the Promised Land. The campsite is built around a unique structure that is 150 feet long and 75 feet wide. This remarkable structure in the wilderness has an outer court as well as an interior structure that includes the holy place and the most holy place. Each section of the tabernacle has its own furniture, each with its own purpose and meaning. The tabernacle and everything about it is a living book that teaches us the ABCs of salvation. A very powerful and popular question is, how can a sinful person enter heaven? The spiritual realities represented in the tabernacle contain God's response. A special building. The tabernacle took about six months to build. It could be disassembled and transported, but it would take over 8,000 people to transport all of the parts. When the glory cloud came to a halt in the wilderness, the entire nation would come to a halt, erect the tabernacle, and camp around it until the glory cloud resumed its movement. The tabernacle was constructed exactly as God had intended. Exodus 25 verses 1 to 9 Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering. From everyone who gives it willingly with his heart you shall take my offering. And this is the offering which you shall take from them, gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen, and goat's hair, ram skins dyed red, badger skins, and acacia wood, oil for the light, and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense. These verses provide information about the materials that were to be used in the construction of the building. The people were instructed by God to bring an offering. They were to do it willingly and out of the goodness of their hearts. Exodus 36.6 tells us that the people had to be told to stop giving because they had given so much. Exodus 36 verse 6 So Moses gave a commandment, and they caused it to be proclaimed throughout the camp, saying, Let neither man nor woman do any more work for the offering of the sanctuary. And the people were restrained from bringing. All the needs of the Lord's work will be met when God's people respond to him voluntarily and without coercion, giving out of the love and generosity of their hearts. According to some estimates, the entire structure weighed around 9,000 pounds. Others have estimated that the value of this, excluding the cost of labor to put it all together, is worth more than $20 million. Take note of the building material categories. Precious metals, gold, silver, bronze, rich fabrics, animal skins, and rare woods. God referred to the tabernacle as his sanctuary. The term sanctuary refers to a sacred place that is separate from the rest of the world. The structure was being prepared for a supernatural occupant. When it was finished, God descended in the glory cloud and dwelt among his people. 40 verse 34. The tabernacle was also a place of worship where the children of Israel would gather to worship God. When the tabernacle was in use, all activity was centered on worship. The tabernacle was also a witness. Acts chapter 7 verse 44. Our fathers had the tabernacle of witness in the wilderness, as he appointed, instructing Moses to make it according to the pattern that he had seen. God's character was evident throughout. Inside, gold was everywhere, creating a beautiful image of God's holiness. The most holy place was a perfect cube measuring 15 by 15 by 15, reflecting what the angels sing around the throne of God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Isaiah 6 verse 3 And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The tabernacle bore witness to the heinousness of sin. A visit to this house of worship included a very disturbing sight. The priests were constantly slaughtering animals for sacrifices. Death and blood were constant reminders that sin was lethal. The tabernacle represented the blessings of salvation. There were three entrances. The one on the farthest outskirts was known as the gate. Exodus 27 verse 16 For the gate of the court there shall be a screen twenty cubits long, woven of blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen, made by a weaver. It shall have four pillars and four sockets. 
The only way into the holy place was through a single entrance that only the high priest could use. Leviticus 16 verses 11 to 28 And Aaron shall bring the bull of the sin offering, which is for himself, and make atonement for himself and for his house, and shall kill the bull as the sin offering which is for himself. Then he shall take a censer full of burning coals of fire from the altar before the Lord, with his hands full of sweet incense beaten fine, and bring it inside the veil. And he shall put the incense on the fire before the Lord, that the cloud of incense may cover the mercy seat that is on the testimony, lest he die. He shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger on the mercy seat on the east side, and before the mercy seat he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his finger seven times. Then he shall kill the goat of the sin offering, which is for the people, bring its blood inside the veil, do with that blood as he did with the blood of the bull, and sprinkle it on the mercy seat and before the mercy seat. So he shall make atonement for the holy place, because of the uncleanness of the children of Israel, and because of their transgressions, for all their sins. And so he shall do for the tabernacle of meeting which remains among them in the midst of their uncleanness. There shall be no man in the tabernacle of meeting when he goes to make atonement in the holy place, until he comes out, that he may make atonement for himself, for his household, and for all the assembly of Israel. And he shall go out to the altar that is before the Lord, and make atonement for it, and shall take some of the blood of the bull, and some of the blood of the goat, and put it on the horns of the altar all around. Then he shall sprinkle some of the blood on it with his finger seven times, cleanse it, and consecrate it from the uncleanness of the children of Israel. And when he has made an end atoning for the holy place, the tabernacle of meeting, and the altar, he shall bring the live goat. Aaron shall lay both his hands on the head of the live goat, confess over it all the iniquities of the children of Israel, and all their transgressions concerning all their sins, putting them on the head of the goat, and shall send it away into the wilderness by the hand of a suitable man. The goat shall bear on itself all their iniquities to an uninhabited land, and he shall release the goat in the wilderness. Then Aaron shall come into the tabernacle of meeting, shall take off the linen garments which he put on when he went into the holy place, and shall leave them there. And he shall wash his body with water in a holy place, put on his garments, come out and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people, and make atonement for himself and for the people. The fat of the sin offering he shall burn on the altar. And he who released the goat as the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water, and afterward he may come into the camp. The bull for the sin offering and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make atonement in the holy place, shall be carried outside the camp. And they shall burn in the fire their skins, their flesh, and their offal. Then he who burns them shall wash his clothes and bathe his body in water, and afterward he may come into the camp. A veil separated the most holy place from the rest of the world. Exodus 26 verse 33 And you shall hang the veil from the clasps. Then you shall bring the ark of the testimony in there, behind the veil. The veil shall be a divider for you between the holy place and the most holy. Each of those doorways is a beautiful picture of Christ who opens the gate, who is the door, who through his own flesh allows us by his blood to enter. John 10 verses 1 to 18 Most assuredly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the doorkeeper opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. And when he brings out his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Yet they will by no means follow a stranger, but will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this illustration, but they did not understand the things which he spoke to them. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. But a hireling, he who is not the shepherd, one who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. 
and the wolf catches the sheep and scatters them. The hireling flees because he is a hireling and does not care about the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and am known by my own. As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And other sheep I have which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock and one shepherd. Therefore my Father loves me, because I lay down my life that I may take it again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This command I have received from my Father. Hebrews 9 verses 23 to 28 Therefore it was necessary that the copies of the things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered the holy places made with hands, which are copies of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Not that he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters the most holy place every year with blood of another. He then would have had to suffer often since the foundation of the world. But now, once at the end of the ages, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And, as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment, so Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, for salvation. A Symbolic Building Exodus 25 verse 9 According to all that I show you, that is, the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all its furnishings, just so you shall make it. Exodus 25 verse 9 is the verse referenced in Hebrews 8 verses 1 to 5. Hebrews 8 verses 1 to 5 Now this is the main point of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord erected, and not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore it is necessary that this one also have something to offer. For if he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law, who serve the copy and shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, See that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. The word pattern is the focus of both passages. Type is also a transliteration of the Greek word pattern. A type in the Old Testament is a person, event, or object that foreshadows a fulfillment in the New Testament. As a result, the tabernacle is an Old Testament type or a representation of a New Testament reality. This symbolic structure represents the Lord Jesus and what he would do for us, that God would come to dwell in his Son, the Lord Jesus. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. John 1 verse 14 And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Greek word for tabernacled is dwelt. God tabernacled in his Son, the Lord Jesus. God also dwells in his church. Ephesians 5 verse 23 For the husband is head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. He is present wherever two or three of God's people are gathered. He lives among us. Matthew 18 verse 20 for where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. He resides in the hearts of individual Christians. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? This simply means that God is present wherever we go and whatever we do. That realization should alter your entire way of life. One of these days, God will dwell in one more place, the New Jerusalem. Revelation 21 verses 2 and 3 Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven, saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. Wouldn't you like to go to that city and spend eternity with God? You can, but you must first go somewhere else. You must follow the path of the cross. In closing, what worship song brings you closer to God?